everyone, Pastor Ryan here. Welcome to the uh, June newsletter. I want to share with you an experience that I had uh, this last week um, with uh, when I was out driving. So I was out driving in the middle of Houston area and uh, pull up to this intersection. We were there for quite some time. It was a long light and to the left there were these two black gentlemen and you could just tell that they were on something. They were homeless. They had up signs that said homeless, help, need food. So as I'm sitting there, they're, they're having a conversation and uh, so I roll down my window just to listen to what it is that they're saying. Um, just to see if there's anything that I could pick up on to pray for them specifically for. And uh, whenever I roll down my window, those guys, you know, they know, you know, they're like, if, some, if somebody rolls down their window, they're going to give them money. So they, they start, one of them started coming over to me and I put my hand up like this and I was like, oh, I was like, I'm sorry, sir, I don't, I don't have any money. And uh, he stands there and he looks at me like this and he looks away and he looks back at me and he goes, I have AIDS. And I look him in his eyes and I was like, sir, I'm very sorry to hear that. I am. I said, uh, can I pray for you? And uh, he looks away, looks away for a long time. Then he, <clears throat> then he, he's standing there and, and you know, it's mid sun, it's super hot. He's standing there and he's looking away and it's like, it's like he couldn't talk to me. Then, then all of a sudden he looked back at me and I looked at him and he goes, um, you know, if you bless me that you'll be blessed. And I looked him in his eyes and I said, I understand that, sir. I do, but I, I don't have any, I don't have any money on me right now. So can I pray for you? And he looked away and he, I mean, it, what seemed like forever, he was looking away and just out of it and everything. And um, then right before we drove off, he looked at me and he goes, my name's Carter Blake, pray for me. And I said, I will pray for you, Carter. And as we drove off, my, my, my son Caleb was in the back. Um, and uh, so we drove off and uh, we prayed for him as we were driving. Um, and so, you know, I just want to talk about that real quick because here's the thing, right? The gentleman that spoke to me was probably Carter right? But the, but the things that were keeping him from looking at me and talking to me and filling me in on the other things, uh, was the enemy. This man's life has been, uh, strangled out by the enemy. Uh, he's either given into temptation or spiritual things that have led him away from Christ and down into a deep, dark area. Uh, who knows how he got AIDS? Uh, the, the, you know, there's many ways. Uh, but you know, this is the sadness of people that continue to choose the world and the enemy and give in to temptations that lead them away from Christ and his blessing and the calling that he has for them. You know, I know for a fact that that's not the life that God has for Carter. I know that for a fact, just like me. I was once in a place like that and that life was not what God had for me. God had for me the life that I live now, uh, the life that I have now where I have my children and I'm, and, and I'm blessed and I live in his goodness and his grace and I go and tell people about him, right? That's the life that God had for me. You know, and it just breaks my heart. And here's why it breaks my heart. This man may not be in a prison, but this man is in prison. You understand? He may not be incarcerated, but he is in a jail cell. He is in a spiritual jail cell. He is not free, okay? He is, he, he has chains that bind him. You understand? He is enslaved to whatever those things are that are in him, that, are, that, that have overcome his life, that darkness. Okay, here's how you know it's not God. Okay, God is life. You understand? Life. And God is light. Okay, in God there is no darkness, so there is no death, right? So God brings life and he brings light to whatever he's in, right? Now, so so that's the part, right? So, so God heals and he restores and he redeems and he brings back to life. Now, don't get me wrong, right? I mean, everybody's going to die, right? So I'm not saying that people aren't going to die if they have Christ. But what I'm saying is that there will be this rejuvenation on the inside of their heart and their spirit and their mind and their will and their emotions and everything from the inside out. And so when you see people like that, that you can just tell that are enslaved, um, it breaks my heart. Here's the thing. When I go into the prisons, uh, a lot of those guys like Carter, some of them will be picked up and taken to the prisons. Okay. And here's the thing. Here's one of the reasons why I do what this because those people need help the most. They're the hardest to love, and the ones that are hardest to love need love the most, okay? They are the ones who are enslaved and need deliverance. If you want to see the Lord move, you go to a place like that. If you want to see the hand of God move, you go to a place like that. Even Christ says it himself. He says, if you did it to the least of these, you did it to me personally, right? He's saying, go to the widows, go to the, the those who are in, are in prisons, go to the, you know, the the orphans, right? Those are the dark places. They need light, and so when you go there, even the tiniest of light shines so bright. 
And uh, so in the prison system, you'll run into these people. I've run into many people uh, who were on drugs and who were enslaved to all of these things. And so for some of these people, God allows them to be picked up because he's given them a second chance. He wants them to have the ability to hear his word and to respond and to be cleaned and to be made new. And some of them actually break free. Some of them actually listen to the call of Christ and, 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 and believe in the gospel and surrender over their lives to God. And they, they, they you know, the Lord starts to do a good work in them and they, they move and live a completely different and new life. And there's tons of testimonies of people like that. I have a testimony like that myself. My wife has a testimony money like that themselves you know I never went to prison but I was in prison you know and so uh, that's why that's why I love what what grace without borders ministries do, does we you know we go to them in the prison and we meet them where they are and we say hey listen there's something that we can give you that you may have never heard there's something that we can bring you that you may have never had and it's hope forgiveness kindness love gentleness you know all of these things that Christ can do and and you know what does it say in the Bible it says you know these are the signs that will follow them who are of me right and uh, they will heal the sick and cast out you know demons and, and cause the blind to see and all of these things and so we have to realize this right when God is saying you know we will cause the blind to see a lot of people are like well that doesn't happen in today's world that's a bunch of bull guys listen to me okay he's talking spiritually okay spiritually I will open the eyes of the spiritually blind and they will be able to see me. Do you guys not realize that's a miracle? For someone who's deep in sin and who's, who only loves darkness, to be able to see the cross of Christ and to see Jesus and to see God clearly and to be then transformed and changed on the inside and to be, to be, to be rebirthed into this, right, into his kingdom and be completely changed is a miracle. But we don't want to call it that because it doesn't look like this physical man seeing again, right? I'll tell you what, guys. That's why we need more people who are willing to go into the prisons. We need people, more people who are willing to go to the homeless. We need more people who are willing to go to the orphans and more people who are willing to go to the widows. Okay, I mean, we all have what we want to call ministries and things that we do, you know, and we get so attached to those and, you know, whatever we want to label it and for whatever cause we want to call it. But the truth is God tells us what his will is and where he wants us to go in his word. And when we go there and everything, I'll tell you what, he shows up. He showed up for that gentleman to, uh, when, I, when we prayed for him the other day, and I know God's going to do something in his life. What? I don't know. God shows up for the men in the prisons when we go there all the time because that's what God promises he will do, and he is, an, he is a God and not a man that should lie. So when he says something, he keeps it. Therefore, we know that what God says will happen and will come true, and that's just the, mu the most amazing and beautiful thing of the Lord. I wanted to share that with you guys this uh, this month. I hope this blesses you. I hope this encourages you to go to those people who are the hardest to go to and to reach out to them and share Christ and to share the gospel. I know this man saw Christ in me. I know he saw Christ when he looked at me. All right, guys, sorry my phone died. Uh, but. Uh, it just reminds me of that girl in Acts 16 where she's calling out to Paul and Silas as they're walking through the town saying, you know, these are the people who know the Christ and, and you know, they turn around and rebuke her and the spirit leaves her, you know, she was the fortune teller and, um, you know, so it's just, it's just stuff like that where, where God is healing people and delivering people. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you today of this, right? Go to those who need Christ the most, right? A lot of times we just go to our friends and people in the church and people who already have Christ or people who already have the knowledge of him and they already know what to do and what they need to do is what they already know. But to see Christ move in amazing ways, go to those who actually need deliverance, those who actually need uh, light in their life, those who actually need something bigger and greater than themselves who don't have that. And I can guarantee you that if you do that, you will fall in love with God's will and what it is that God does in his ministry, and you will just want to do it more like me. I love you guys. Take care.